Hi, Gail Fugit, President and CEO of the Advertising Research Foundation. I'm here with Mark Zagorski. Hi, I'm Mark Zagorski, uh, Executive Vice President of the Nielsen Marketing Cloud, and I'm having a wonderful time here with Gail and the ARF crew in Cannes. This is not your mama's Nielsen yeah. anymore, right? Yeah. Nielsen has really evolved their business model significantly. So did you imagine when you were on that stage that you'd be... Uh, have been swept up into this <laughs> well, amazing wild ride. Even at that point, when we had first started our relationship with Nielsen, yeah. um, it was clear that they were ready psychologically to move beyond small beta data into the big yeah. data world. Yeah. And, and they got it. I think it took a little time to get things rolling. But they needed the platforms. Right. And, and that's exactly, the infrastructure, that's which exactly, is your business. exactly what they've started working on with us. And it's not your mama's Nielsen. It is totally not because... We're looking at not, it's the merging of big data Even plus panel data. Even the access data. of the data. Totally. The, 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 the fluidity of the data between, um, between watch and buy clients, mm -hmm. A, but also between applications is mm -hmm. totally different. How do the worlds of marketing, advertising, and uh, insights and analytics, you know, also known as research, mm -hmm. how, how do you see those today? It's being driven by um, the more fluid data, and there are tools out there that actually give the people who are trying to make those decisions the power yeah. to harness all that data in one yeah. place. It sounds like it's speed and access. Yeah, there was always some level of speed, but with access being critical, which is how do we democratize data? Okay. Give yeah. it to people who are making decisions mm -hmm. in a very simple way. Mm -hmm. And I think what Nielsen is doing with us and with the business that they're building around the marketing cloud is actually making that come to life on the supply side, on the tool side, bringing stuff together with easy to use tools. That it's almost programmatic from a client to this data data management platform? You know, pre digested but we don't want to make it feel like there's not customization not and flexibility yeah. to, to it as well. Yeah. We talked about those several functions is boiling down into kind of three key areas, planning, yeah. activation, and analysis and measurement. The ability to plan a campaign the ability to then activate the data mm -hmm. around that, which means take those users and target them or, or mm -hmm. deliver a campaign against them, and then analyze what's happened. Mm -hmm. To be able to do that in one tool set mm -hmm. with multiple data sets associated to a single person, that's our drive, but that's what marketers want. How do you see the role of creative? So in the planning bucket, when you're determining you know, what this campaign should look like, but also who it should reach, there are factors around you know, creative delivery one versus creative delivery two in my plan. I mean, the, in the analysis around that. When it comes to activation and finding what audience that I want to target, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. What creative asset goes to those, those people. Mm -hmm. um, but probably where it plays the biggest role is on the analysis role, which is determining what creative actually had impact versus what creative didn't have impact, um, and then being able to modify when you look at this, because this is not a linear of process, course it's cyclical. Do you feel that attribution and that that course correction is keeping up with the consumer today? We're doing a good job of mapping the consumer and where they go, but it is a never-ending process. Mm -hmm. It's not one that can't be addressed. It's one that will never end. In so many ways, what's old is new again. Yeah. How have you kept up with that? One of the problems with big companies addressing problems in this space is that they become um, very navel-gazing. And things that don't make it as scale, they yeah. don't get on their radar screen. Yeah. Nielsen has created an environment in which they said, look, we want to um, partner with companies like Exlate and acquire them just because we believe this is important to yeah. us to know. How have you navigated your career? Two key things. First of all, I could never have done what I did in the startup world unless I had the back. The, you know the understanding and the training kind of that a big to get company the did. Exactly, you hear the great successes in startups based on you know someone who started something when they're 18 or whatever. But what I, from what I've seen over 20 years, um, you have a lot more successes of people who actually got the education, and by that mm -hmm. meaning, understanding of business fundamentals. Mm -hmm. I was lucky enough to kind of, you know, succeed and fail mm -hmm. many times. Mm -hmm. So I've failed more than I've succeeded in How'd those failures. How'd you deal with that? If you love what you're doing, the failure doesn't matter. You just learn from it. You try to analyze what the major factors were in the failure and not get too emotional about it. But beyond that, though, it's also um, relationships are important. So when we had been on that yeah. 360 panel years ago, you know, we had been building a relationship with Nielsen. Well, it's been said here at Cannes um, that advertising doesn't reflect consumers as authentic 
or even handed a fashion as, as they are. What do advertisers need to do to make the kind of contribution um, that they need to for, you know, in terms of values? I think data can actually make the difference in the way these brands look at the world. But if you actually do have data that shows you the diversity of everyone yeah. you're dealing with, yeah. you can't dispute that, yeah. and that should drive not so only your message, but your reach. We've got to get that data uh, into the creatives. I, I was on the creative data jury for the last few days, and it's amazing how data is not just a big company or big brand thing. It is now impacting creative from all over the world, across all types of brands and all types of campaigns. So we looked at things, everything from how data was being used for targeting to mm -hmm. how it actually impacted the creative output. Yeah. What's your watchword for the next five years? Uh, multi-platform and the okay. evolution of multi-platform. I feel like it's almost like multi-experiential, and by that meaning, what you want to try to create is a single experience across multiple different platforms, right? And, and that's where the thinking is progressing to. Yeah. And multi-platform is merely just the hop that you have to get Agnostic to to get to, to the that. end. Yeah. Yeah. This and has I, been a real honor to spend some time with you. Good Thanks you so much, Mark. All right, take care.